<laughs> Hello and welcome to the After Hours Podcast. I am Daniel, joined with Joey Prochaska, and today joining us is Joystick Game Bar out from Atlanta, Georgia. We are joined today with Johnny Brandon and General Manager Dan Durnell. All right, so let's start off. How long have you guys been with Joystick Game Bar? How long has Joystick Game Bar been around? Joystick Game Bar will be turning eight years old this year, August. Johnny and Brandon were around since before Joystick Game Bar. They are the creators of Joystick Game Bar. They are Joystick Game Bar. Um, Stan Lee of Joystick Game Bar is yeah. how we like to yeah. count ourselves. Yeah. We're like Gandalf the pink and Gandalf the purple. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah, Brandon and I uh, have, you know, we, we had talked about this for a long time. You know, like a lot of people, we uh, would get drunk at bars, and like a lot of people, we would say, hey, you know what? We should open a bar. Oh my god, we could totally do that. Yeah, that's so easy. Let's just do so that. Easy. And we were wrong, but yeah, we did it anyway. Yeah, been regretting it ever since. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> no, That's awesome. And so, is it kind of like a 64-bit arcade bar kind of thing? Uh, yeah, so all the uh, arcade games are, they're from the 80s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and we've got a couple early aughts, I believe, as well. Um, we didn't want to restrict ourselves to one time period, because uh, just ar- arcades and video games obviously touch every demographic, every, there's a nerdy subculture uh, for every demographic. And uh, so we didn't want to discriminate by age or, or anything like that. Uh, so we've got everything from an original centipede to uh, Terminator two second tag is probably our newest game that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly it's a lesser bit than most current video games. I don't know what number that would be. Uh, and then full bar. Uh, we got a great cocktail program. Uh, we do a kitchen incubation thing. So we find uh, really talented <laughs> chefs that don't necessarily have the means to open their own place uh, and give them uh, an audience, a kitchen to work out of, uh, super low costed them to be able to uh, build a following. They stay usually for about a year, sometimes a little bit more. Um, and the idea is that hopefully they fly the nest and populate Atlanta with really good homegrown places because chains suck. Yeah. They're the Avengers of our kitchens. There you go. They all get their <laughs> own spit off. That's awesome. No, yeah, I, I was going through you guys' Facebook page, and it just looks like you guys are super passionate about what you do. Um, I also came across some interesting pictures. I saw there was a the most intriguing Yoda baby doll, and I was just wondering if you could talk a little about that. <laughs> oh, that baby is Yolo. Baby Yolo, that is all that is literally the creation of Dan Durnell. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, wow. so Brandon brought me this uh brats baby doll it's, it's a very brats esque uh it was a batgirl doll that was very yvonne craig batgirl the um uh, adam west batgirl uh he uh, adam west also played batgirl uh he played <laughs> yvonne craig as the batgirl um but it was this weird like creepy doll that had the oversized eyes the oversized head um and it was in the the early heydays of Baby Yoda. So uh, I handed that in a can of green spray paint to Dan, and, and he said, M- "Make me a Baby Yoda." So uh, I, I went back to the office with a lot of glue and some cardboard and some imagination, and I uh, then was born Baby Yoda. Yeah, and Baby Yoda still lives in the bar. Yeah, it's a bit of a Where's <laughs> Waldo with him. Like, yeah. you can okay. find him if you look. Yoda moves about. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And how? So I also saw something along. Uh, I saw Bar Wars. Is that like a an event that you guys have, or is that just kind of like a post you created? Or how does Yoda doll tie into Bar Wars? There was an original, like back when Star Wars first came out. Uh, they had created these kind of trading cards or commemorative yeah. baseball card sort of situations, um, and so we took those and the the Bar Wars cards that y'all are talking about. Is just uh, really bastardized versions of those. Yeah, if you go back, you will find that they're the they're literally the same layout as the cards from like the late seventies and you know early eighties and mid eighties. Uh, we like to, um, yeah, we like to play around and jump back and forth from decade to decade because you know uh, fandom, unlike music, is something that d- people don't typically just sort of you know get out of. They don't just graduate from that, right? Yeah. 
I, I have a feeling there are things that uh, the two of you were really into as kids that you probably still really love, even if you won't admit it. Yeah. What, in fact, what <laughs> were y'all into? Oh, man. I had, um, so as far as Star Wars goes, I had like this, um, it was like you have to pull out these pieces and it turns into like a 3D Star Wars little action figure thingy. But I had those. Um, yeah. I was more into right. that. I was, I was really into like the Lego Star Wars when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, nice. And by the way, uh, may the fourth be with you, you know? Yes. Uh-huh. And, and with you also. Yeah. That's right. And also with you. That's right. It's my favorite religion. I was really excited. I uh, went to uh, very masked up oh. in the Publix uh, earlier today to get some groceries. And our uh, cashier was wishing everyone uh, a happy May the 4th. And the bagger, uh, who was, he just had no idea what the fuck was going on, why he kept saying that to people. (laughs) 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 That's too funny. So this is the last question I have regarding Star Wars and Yoda doll. So it looks like you guys are very creative with your social media and your Yoda doll. What are some of the things that you guys have done with that Yoda doll? Uh, that we could say oh, out loud in some sort of national publication. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that year that was really messed around a bit. I don't know if you've looked at all the cards, yeah. but that that little kid likes to party. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was sort of a um, you know we we do not mind uh, jumping on the occasional bandwagon, and so that was some bandwagon jumping jumping. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, but we usually just do something once and then let it stay like that. So we haven't done much with, uh, baby YOLO since then. Um, yeah. you know, until, but you know what? Baby YOLO is ready, is ready <laughs> for when that moment where we call on him or her, cause we don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't judge. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. But right now, baby YOLO is in, in, yeah, a little bit of a, a nice semi retirement. Uh, okay. yeah, we did all that for, uh, an event to, it was a, a drive, a canned food uh, clothing drive for uh, the homeless that are in our area. We know a guy who's this amazing activist goes out. Marshall Ransifer. Yeah. He is an amazing human being who, who just goes and hand people in need what they need. Uh, and we just wanted to try and help him out as best we could. Um, and we wanted to get as much attention to that as uh, we could bring. So... Uh, so we used the most popular pop culture reference we could find, which yeah. was, of course, Baby Yoda at the time. Yeah, one of uh, it, it joystick at least, you know, um, when we started this, uh, Brandon and I are, uh, we are not particularly shy about our politics, and we wear that on our sleeve. And part of that is being engaged in the community, even though there's a lot of people who, quite frankly, live in the community and aren't necessarily patrons, right? You know, they're still our neighbors. And we are uh, downtown Atlanta. And as you know, in a lot of downtown areas, there's just a higher percentage of people who are experiencing homelessness. Um, so, you know, we just try to help out because we think that's important. It's, it's, part of, it's part of the responsibility of being a good business owner. Yeah, absolutely. We noticed on Facebook, there were some Andrew Yang posters in your bar. Are you guys in the Yang gang? Yeah, that was, uh, having Andrew Yang here was uh, one of the highlights of our live. We could call it a career. Yeah, uh, to get a, a legit presidential candidate and one who was very forward thinking um, and uh, mm. also genuinely a cool, nice, good human being. Uh, it was really exciting to get him and the Yang Gang here. Yeah, he Yang. actually. <laughs> yeah, the day after he actually went through. Um, the day after he was at Joystick, he went to our other bar, which is right across the street, Georgia Beer Garden, uh, for as long as that might be there. And uh, he did an event, um, uh, and it was pretty amazing. He had several hundred people who showed yeah. up, um, and it was right after the uh, Democratic debates in Atlanta. So he left there, and he stuck around, and then the day after, he had this event. And it was um, it was impressive, the number of people who showed up. He really obviously connected with a lot of people. Yeah, and talk about a diverse crowd. I mean, yeah. Hey, old, young, Asian, black, white, gay, straight, male, female. Like right. we, had, we had kids there. We had, yeah. uh, Yang Gang was real diverse. And that was amazing what yeah. uh, the movement he was kind of able to build. And it'll be, we're very curious to see what he does in the future. So what's your favorite part about working at Joystick? 
Uh, having Dan do everything. Oh, Dan. yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. We're not even here anymore, man. We just – we sit at home on our piles of quarters. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, un- yeah. it's uncomfortable, but piles of them. Uh, yeah. I, I, joystick is awesome uh, because, uh, like the Yang Gang, it is super diverse. And so it's really cool to be able to, uh, it's, it, for, in Johnny and I's case, sit at the bar, in Dan's case, usually behind the bar, um, and be able to just talk to everyone and see who comes in, see who's kind of connecting with our real weird nerdy vibe. Uh, it's it's fun. I would say that that element of the job is uh, yeah. What keeps us going? Yeah, it is really nice to see all of these people from these this vast array of backgrounds come in and all enjoy joystick the same way. You know, there's a as Brandon mentioned when it comes to like diversity. You know, we are that's always made me very happy about joystick is that you cannot come into joystick on any one day and peg it as being one type of bar, other than the fact that you've got people who are just a little nerdy and that just crosses. Mm-hmm. Pretty much every demographic boundary you can think of. Do you have any moments where it's like maybe not the biggest highlights where you're like, oh, today sucks? <laughs> Pukers. People who puke in yeah. public. People who decide they can just pee wherever. Oh, I swear <laughs> to God, if anyone listening has ever pissed anywhere other than a while in public, you need to talk in person. Yeah. Preferably <laughs> outside. Yeah. Yep. By the way, frat brothers out yeah. there, that seems to be something that's more fraternity related. Yeah. So um, don't do that. <laughs> well, that's funny because uh, me and Dan are actually in a fraternity. Okay, let me, then let, me, let us ask you a question. Yeah. When was the last time you were peeing somewhere that was a toilet? Yes. The only time I didn't pee in a toilet was to water a tree. So. <laughs> You must be well hydrated, sir. Yeah. Do you guys ever have tournaments at Joystick, you know, like Super Mario or Smash Bros, anything like that? Uh, We actually do do a bi-weekly Smash um, Smash Ultimate on the Switch. We do every other Wednesday night. And initially, it just started on a projector in our back room, but since it's kind of grown and we've set up multiple stations with multiple switches with the amount of people that have come to play, which has been really awesome. Um, on Saturday nights, we have mean rock band karaoke, like uh, the classic guitar hero, but then rock band entered in your drum set and your vocals and your bass and regular guitar. And that's led by uh, a lovely individual named Sean who has this amazing deep baritone voice that tells you how much you suck. If you <laughs> are ever overconfident, I encourage you to come to Mean Rock Band Karaoke. Yeah. It's good. It keeps everyone grounded. Do you guys play any instruments? I play bass on easy. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm usually a, a guitar guy. Unless there's enough booze flowing, I'll jump on the vocals. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do drums. I like drums, and uh, and I will sing if I've had enough alcohol in me. And what is the go to song? Oh man, the the song that gets played the most is uh, Mister Brightside. Uh, Sean yeah. loves it when you play that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, weird to see what what ends up being the most popular sort of thing because I would not have called Mister Brightside as the most popular rock band song. Yeah. Uh, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> Still don't get it. Yeah. Most popular song. Yeah. yeah. Does it make any sense? Right. Great song in case Brandon Flowers is listening. Yeah. No. <laughs> hey, we love Mormon. <laughs> yeah. I will say that when it comes to our jukebox, at least when Brandon and I were behind the bar, which was very brief, but we were behind the bar. And a very long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. In a galaxy far, far away. I would say that the most common song that we would hear over and over again was Toto Africa. Mm-hmm. On the jukebox. What's the craziest thing you guys have had happen at the bar? Uh, we've been very lucky on, uh, so we're on Edgewood Avenue uh, in the old Fourth Ward uh, in downtown Atlanta. And we've been very lucky that we've had a lot of artists come through either just to drink or to perform. But if you want to see Joystick in a music video, be sure you check out uh, Draco uh, by Future. We're definitely the mm-hmm. first minute. Yeah. That really, really hazy arcade those kids are playing at, that's Joystick. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. That's so cool. 
Sounds like you guys have done a lot. <laughs> oh, we specifically have not. No. But, uh, but a lot has happened here, yes. yes. <laughs> We're going to hype it. Like, it sounds like we've done right? a lot. <laughs> that's the, how, that's how the soul the- of Atlanta, by the way, right? It's, it's hyping shit. That's how we got the Olympics. Mm-hmm. There I, don't you know, go. I don't know how we got anything else yet, but, but that's how we got the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not the peak city. We're the hype city. Mm. How's Atlanta and what makes it special? Oh, that's a great question. That is actually a good question. So I, Atlanta is particularly unique, I think. I, in the limited travel I've done, I don't know that anywhere is as – I'm trying to figure out how to word this properly because Atlanta has this great soul and this great artistic community and this great uh, – kind of it's a draw it's a pull right yeah because there's also just a little bit about fuck you that atlanta has yeah <laughs> that uh, that has been used to amazing great uh effect uh in our civil uh civil rights history uh and that is also used to amazing great effect in our nightlife yeah uh, the fact that you can go to new york city go to a strip club and look at underwear is offensive to yeah, us as right? Atlantans. That's that's wrong. <laughs> it's not a strip club then. That's just yeah. like a it's a cabaret. Right. At that yeah. point. And I think the fact that, you know, when you get into uh, part if you have you know, there's two I think the old adage is that if you remove Atlanta from Georgia, you're left with Alabama, right? So what we get is this concentrated center of people from throughout the South who don't feel comfortable in their hometowns. And so they come to Atlanta and they bring their uniqueness you know, they bring their artistic vision, they bring their creativity, and they they uh, they bring their desire to learn about other things. And I think that's what makes Atlanta very unique because it's it's not New York. And you know, overall, New York is much better. L.A. is much better if you just measure it based on uh, you know subway access and just the sheer volume of things that are out there, the diversity of things. But when it comes to a place that has a really strong uh, black culture infused into everything, then that's Atlanta. I don't think you can get that anywhere else. Yeah. Every single weirdo in that has grown up in the Southeast, I'm not saying all of them have moved to Atlanta, but they've certainly all thought about it uh, because we really are just this magnet for uh, anything that is not the norm. Uh, It's why Atlanta Pride is one of the greatest prides in the world. It's why Dragon Con uh, is one of the greatest conventions that most people have never heard of. Uh, It really is, uh, Atlanta has this spirit about it that's just weird. Yeah. There's always been a strangeness to Atlanta, and it's been true since the very founding of the city. We've had a lot of weird things. I mean, the very first mayor of Atlanta back in, you know, the... 18, 18, let's just say 30 to 40. Yeah, or BC. Who knows? No, no, no. But, uh, I mean, he owned a, a, he owned, he made stills, right? He was a bar owner. He's a tavern owner. So we come by it honestly. That's really awesome. I got to ask, what is Dragon Con? What? Oh, my God. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong with you? Yeah. Wow. I need you to question yourself before we answer (laughs) your question. Yeah. Dragon Con is one of the oldest uh, sci-fi fantasy conventions in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, At this point, it's over, gosh, over 25 years old. Over 25 years old. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, and it's way better than Comic-Con because Uh, it's not bought out by these stupid corporations. Right. Uh, it is 100% fan run. and uh, One of the, the best parades that you will ever see yeah. through a downtown area. Dragon Con always has a parade that makes other people's parades, you know, look like they suck. Yes. Uh, every, uh, <laughs> the cosplay uh, in Dragon Con is unparalleled. There, it is, uh, so, uh, the what Dragon Con is, a sci- like you said, a sci-fi convention that it takes place over four days. It used to be, I think, one, maybe two, maybe it started as one, but it was kind of like a two-day convention that has since grown to encapsulate also Thursday and Monday. And it's this huge long weekend of revelry in your nerditude. So whatever you're nerdy about, whatever your fandom is, yeah. uh, be it something as a big as Star Wars or as small as a lot of that anime I don't watch, or, you know, just whatever real niche nonsense you're into, there is a panel about it. They have uh, celebrities there for it. They have parties built around it. Uh, it is beautiful. It right. is wonderful. It is uh, literally family-owned and operated. Yeah. Uh, and they refuse to sell out. 
it's fantastic, their integrity. Uh, when we first opened in 2012, when Joystick first opened, we tried to get involved because Johnny and I have been lifelong fans of Dragon Con. And they were hesitant just because we were a for-profit company. And, yeah. they, they didn't really know how to place us because they were just nervous. They were that nervous about letting it in that even though we were just this tiny little bar that uh, can only fit, you know, 100, 120 people uh, and we're clearly fans and we're clearly nerds, they have such a um, foundation that they don't want to violate. Yeah. Uh, and it's that only made us love them more. Yeah. yeah we appreciate integrity, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we understood it because we also go out of our way to not necessarily sell out. Um, you know, we've sold out a little here and there, I mean, but, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, and Dragon Con is one of those conventions where unlike Comic-Con where, you know, you have all these, if you're talking about just different tracks and you go to see celebrities overall, then sure. I guess Comic-Con's got that because they're so close to LA. Right. Right. But after everything is over, Dragon Con becomes this whole other thing, which is probably the greatest partying group of fandom that you will ever see at any convention anywhere. You know, they, they bring in seventy to 80,000 people a year for this thing. It's one of the larger groups that comes through. Yeah. And it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's, I think there's something about Dragon Con that still feels like the people who go to it are in charge of the direction it goes in. And it's not just, you know, movie companies and television shows. Yeah. I, of course, have never been to Comic-Con, uh, but... The amount of news stories I've read or whatever that's like, oh, this uh, trailer premiere is at Comic-Con this year and all of the news, the coverage about it. That's not what you get at Dragon Con and that's not what Dragon Con needs or wants. It is just about the fans being able to be themselves, being able to revel in what they love. That kind of love, I guess. I, I keep repeating the same word. Maybe it's the liquor I'm drinking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's it, so you get a Comic-Con and maybe... You know, years ago, you get to go to a panel and the David Carradine is there when he was still alive. And uh, but you go to Dragon Con and you're going to run into David, David Carradine at the freaking bar, right? Without anyone. And, you know, so you'll find celebrities holding court in different bars around, you know, because, you know, Dragon Con had one hotel, as Brandon pointed out. And now it's basically every major hotel in downtown Atlanta and the convention center is a, a part of Dragon Con. So. It's, uh, it's unusual to be able to run into people um, who are in that position and have so little barrier between you two when it comes to discussing things. Uh, Brandon and I snuck into the Battlestar Galactica TV show uh, yeah, that was party. <laughs> God, at this point, it's almost a decade ago. Probably. Um, <laughs> there was like a private section where all the people from the show were in, and there was like the big general section. So we just snuck around, went through the hotel like we worked there, and then, you know, the great thing about it, it's not particularly well organized at times. They're much better now. So much better now. <laughs> we were able to tell them, we were able to, this basically, we didn't quite Jedi mind trick them, but we did tell them, hey, so such and such has got to get to the airport. And then they just let us in. And then we just hung out <laughs> and drank their booze. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> in all seriousness, if you ever are, if you're ever doing um, folks that run different conventions, you should absolutely reach out to Dragon Con because it is. It's one of the few homegrown sort of conventions that you'll find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's because it's not surrounding. Uh, it's it's not the Microsoft convention that comes to town every year. It's not the Chicken Pluckers, the poultry convention that comes to Atlanta every year, where it's uh, just all about like what are the new innovations in cramming chickens into really tiny cages. Right. It's just about. <laughs> uh, Here's our new monster chicken that we genetically altered. It has 18 wings. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to chicken pluckers. We love them. As, as a hospitality uh, place in Atlanta, we have to put the chicken pluckers. Yeah, yeah. You keep on plucking. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but but that kind is of just so authentic, and you've never been around uh, just the sheer volume of people in their element. Yeah. It's like gay pride. Yeah. But you don't have to be gay. But, you know, there's a parade and it there's is, leather nerd and there's pride. Yeah, yeah. It's nerd, it's nerd pride. pride. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's and it's just as slutty as gay pride, though. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Hopefully it happens this year. Who uh, knows with the, well, you know, with yeah. the pandemic? We have a couple of months now with today being May the 4th. But my guess and I have no knowledge of this, but my guess is they're figuring out how to work around this yeah. terrible thing. That's 
the last, I don't know, three or four years, we have run their classic arcade, uh, which is always free. If you are, um, if you get a pass to, uh, to Dragon Con, you can just go mm-hmm. up and play. Um, we're usually next door to uh, Tokyo Attacks, which is another great uh, group of folks who are just... Yeah, Tokyo Attack is an arcade that does uh, the stuff we don't do, which is those really super modern games. Uh, it's very, like the name implies kind of Japanese and crazy and large in your face and it's great and we love being next to them um, and they're very good people. Yeah. Um, but then we are the kind of quieter like Mortal Kombat sort of situation. Yeah. You know, we did a, uh, a Mortal Kombat tournament. Part of that tournament as far as who won was based on your team name and your uniform that you showed up in and what we ended up doing was like a Sports Illustrated spread for the winner uh, which was... Um, I do hate to tell you this, but this was NBA Jam. Oh, I'm sorry. Like I said, it like it had nothing, had absolutely nothing to do with Mortal Kombat. <laughs> uh, but uh, so it, because it was an NBA Jam, the folks who won not only did they like kick most people's asses, but they also showed up in these great Afro wigs and these shorty little basketball shorts, tank tops, and they were called Doom Shakalaka. They were representing Doctor Doom, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> We also secretly have this weird, never before seen version of NBA Jam where all the players are from Mortal Kombat. And that's why I confused it. Yeah. Not because I've been you drinking. You can't play that anywhere but Joystick Gate on <laughs> uh, right. Avenue. There's a secret password you have to give, and we can't tell you what it is. So, what are you guys' like, go to favorite games at Joystick? Mind games. <laughs> 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 you know what? My default, I think, as many games we've had come and go, one of the first games we had was Galaga. There's just something really satisfying about putting a quarter into Galaga and playing that for however long you can go. I'm pretty old, so I thought I would get better over the course of the years, but I suck just as much now as I did when I was a teenager at it. But I don't love it any less. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's definitely my go-to game. My, I always go to try to get the, uh, the default high score, which is like, what, a million? I always get up to like, Three hundred thousand? I don't even get close to it. All right, several years ago, the high score was three million. Uh, yeah, so. so step it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have Dig Dug at Joystick. We have had Dig Dug. Yeah, yeah. We've had a few games. So not all games rotate in and out, but we've had a few that have rotated in and out. Dig Dug is definitely one of them. Do you guys own your games at the bar, or do you rent them? As of now, we we own all the games. Uh, we have had arrangements in the past where we've rented games, which was uh, interesting because it also helped us rotate. Um, but we've just, for business reasons, been moving into trying to own as many games as possible. And recently, about a year ago, I guess now, we brought someone in on staff. Uh, previously, we contracted with different folks to come and help service the games because we don't really want to be touching things that could kill us. Yeah. You know, and they were all great, but we, you know, we just had enough need for it that we brought someone in house to Brian Thompson, and he's been uh, amazing at that and making sure that our games are up and running as much as possible. It can be hard to do because you know we get a lot of drunk people playing them, and they, they don't they play pretty hard. Yeah, I don't. I mean, maybe y'all as uh, fraternity brothers know this, but uh, drunk adults could are basically just really strong toddlers. <laughs> and we get a lot of strong toddlers too. We so. also have toddlers. <laughs> but it doesn't work the other way around where the the when the toddlers drink they turn into masculine men yeah uh yeah so this is georgia not alabama so we've never really found out <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh brian has been great we're we've been friends with him for uh quite a while now he's been uh, a good friend of the bar and we're super happy to have him on staff because uh, not only is he an encyclopedia of knowledge um, and amazing at just the technical aspect of fixing these very old games, uh, but he's well connected within the arcade community, uh, which is really important to us. Uh, and he also he used to work at an arcade back in arcades original heyday. Yeah, I, I would say that Atlanta right now with I mean, the community of people who refurbish games or purchase games and play games and have their own private collections or they're open to the public is pretty incredible. Atlanta is definitely ground zero for nerddom, I think, right now, not just in the fandom. But, you know, when you look at the sheer volume of things that people are looking at that are 
just filmed here now, right? You know, uh, Yollywood is a real thing. And so long as we keep that tax credit in place, you know, we're pretty happy about <laughs> it. Yeah. So do you think 30 years from now that there's going to be, for example, maybe like a Call of Duty arcade game or like League of Legends in the bar? There are bars now that uh, that have that. Uh, uh, Battle and Brew is uh, another bar here yeah. in Atlanta that uh, they focus more on those kinds of um, PC games and uh, networked yeah. games. This is my real old man coming out because I don't know what they call it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, console uh, games and uh, and just PC games, right? Yeah. yeah. So the, the like land parties. There's the word I'm looking for. Th- that's what Battle and Brew does. Uh, so it's already starting to happen, and I think obviously with the sheer industry that's around professional sports, professional esports. That yeah, in 30 years, I think you're right. There is going to be a nostalgia for it. There's going to be the infrastructure in place to just make those happen. Yeah, the older people get, the more they go through and look back on the things from their youth. So I think that's just a natural process of everybody getting really closer to death. Another aspect about that question that I think is really interesting is it's hard to imagine where gaming will be in 30 years. With the introduction of VR is a bit of a game changer. And it's hard to imagine all of us having like full on VR sets where we can run around and do like 360s while holding this like fake gun in our living room. But like, that could be a very real thing. If you think of like some of the, yeah. the first arcade games, we probably always thought that gaming would be in a cabinet like that. And it, I'm sure it would be impossible to imagine that everyone would have their own console in their own homes and you yeah. gaming would just be universal to people. Yeah. You know, So uh, that, I think there very well may be a point in 30 years where gaming, as we know it today, is so vastly different that the things that we play on, like, um, Xbox One and PS4 and things of that nature will be nostalgic and it will be yeah. like, oh shit, you still have that game? Where did you find that? You know, right? Yeah, you can't even right. smell the blood. Right, you know, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, and it's hard to predict that, right? You know, always in motion is the future, says Master Yoda. <laughs> so how are, how are the holidays at Joystick? We have found uh, that uh, that the I don't want to say fake holidays because some of these are very real. The um, the non traditional holidays are uh, much more successful for us. So Life Day, which is of course the Wookie holiday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know it, Google it right now. But FYI, I just really disappointed that you don't know what Life Day is or Dragon Con. I'm just I just have to throw that out. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, we have if there is an end of the world, the Mayan the world ragnarok if there's a prediction of the end of the world we're throwing a party and those parties <laughs> have always been way better than thanksgiving <laughs> yeah absolutely uh when it was uh the mayan or the aztec end of the world uh, we uh we had a little aztec wheel that you could spin and you either get like a free shot or a roll of toilet paper all of which seems to work <laughs> too. yeah we should it was it was several years ahead of its time but yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're trailblazers, really, mm-hmm. when you think about it. We're just we're just born in the wrong, not really decade. We're just like five years off, yeah, three years off. Just, <laughs> so a little <laughs> slow. Picasso's of our time. Was mm. he appreciated while he was alive, Picasso? I feel like Probably. He was. So someone yeah. who, yeah. We were not Van appreciated. Van Gogh, him. maybe? Van Gogh definitely had, was dead before yeah. he was appreciated. Van Gogh. I was thinking we were the, uh, you know, the, the Robert Bloch of our time, <laughs> right? You know? A lot of people... Because no one knows who that is. <laughs> he, you know what? He invented those little. Um, he invented the little umbrellas that go on the top of some of those little toothpicks that you put into drinks. And I know uh, you appreciated those. You're very frank. You know, we have a question for you because you know when we looked y'all up, it seems like y'all are in Ohio. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've actually had several phone calls from Ohio where they had confused our bar with some other particular bar up there. Yeah. So at first mm-hmm. we thought maybe y'all had gotten the wrong bar, but we figured we just figured it all out during the podcast. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a <laughs> reveal that we were in Atlanta in the middle of your thing. Right. <laughs> no, we're not in Columbus. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. But, yeah, how did you find us out of yeah. your today? Yeah. So we discovered Joystick. Um, we were just kind of all going around to larger cities and target, uh, targeting unique bars. And um, we found Joystick along the way. And we thought it was really cool and unique. So we decided to message you guys. Do we owe you money? Yeah. <laughs> or is this a giant scam to right. be a debt collector? Because... Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. 
No, uh, 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 accidente, accidente. No hablo, hablamos. <laughs> yeah, so we actually, um, we, we just kind of looked up, you know, like top 50 bars in certain states. And that's kind of how we're doing our outreach right now. Ooh, where were we? It was 48, yeah. actually. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you considering Atlanta a big city. Yeah. And, you know, and I personally have always loved Ohio. It's like the most southern northern state. That makes sense. How much do you guys know about Toledo? I, you know, I don't know. Actually, I've not been to. Uh, my only connection to Toledo is that a uh, when I was growing up in New York, in a small town in New York, our neighbor was from Toledo, Ohio, and she was one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Uh, she, she took care of me. She was a good friend to the family. So Toledo for me, I adore it. I know nothing about it, but I. Adore it. <laughs> That's much more than my Ohio memory because the last Ohio memory I had was uh, I was in Columbus, Ohio, and I hit my head on the inside of a bathhouse, and I thought I was going to die there, and then I and I left. But that was, uh-huh. that was that's my last memory of Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Was thinking, he, shit, I need to go home. Yeah, he literally <laughs> woke up in it. What, so, what are each of you drinking? Yeah, and what are you wearing? Um, I'm actually drinking a strawberry pina colada. Um, pretty freaking good. Oh, I wouldn't know what you're wearing for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> how short are your shorts? <laughs> Wait, how old are y'all? I am uh, 21, almost 22. Almost. Almost. Well, God, you're so old. Right. Are you, are, yeah, I mean, if you're still counting your years as like, I'm 21 and three quarters, right. then you're too young. Right. <laughs> when you're almost something, then you're, yeah. 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 You need to stop that because life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and long and long it gets yeah what are you guys drinking uh, so i at this point uh i'm drinking some foro which is a little italian amaro bitter liqueur because anything that's just bitter and fuck me up i am drinking a creature comforts athena and some espalone uh reposado and smoking a cigarette that's a good accent mm, there you go Dan, what are you drinking, Dan? Yeah, uh, I'm drinking a burial hawkbill, which is uh, from this brewery out of Asheville. Highly recommend it. And I'm drinking a uh, rum uh, under the name of the Real McCoy. It's a uh, 12 year old rum, highly delicious. Yeah, if you can get your hands on some Real McCoy, uh, do it. Just don't question it. Do it. Yeah, ingest <laughs> it. The name sounds suspect, but it's real. The Real McCoy. It's the, it's the Real McCoy. <laughs> Yeah, God, that name actually kind of is a little cheesy (laughs) now that we're saying that out loud. There's a story there. There's always a story. There's always a story. Dan, I know you're drinking something uh, pretty interesting. Can you tell the boys about it? I had some vodka, chocolate milk, and ice cream. And now I'm just working. Oh, oh yeah, deliciousness. Now I'm just working on a... They got uh, Smirnoff seltzers now, so I got one of those. Hmm. Oh, uh, Smirnoff ice uh, got me through college. So I, I understand. What college do you guys go to? Georgia State University, GSU. Go Panthers. University of Georgia. Go Dog. Oh, Georgia State. Isn't that like one of the biggest schools in the United States? Yeah, we graduated more African Americans than any other college uh, over the past couple years. And, uh, you know, that's like the one thing I know about them. And we also just bought a stadium. That's It has been 15 <laughs> years since I've been there. And that's those are the only two facts I have for you. <laughs> But I do, I do love them. What do you think of Hair of the Dog and uh, the Hangover Cure? It is. Historically, Hair of the Dog is absolutely the best way to recover uh, from a hangover. Brandon, for instance, has not had a hangover in 15 years because he just gets drunk the entire time. So I when he comes back from relieving his bladder, I'm sure he'll explain that. There's definitely, I mean, Hair of the Dog, as much as you know, people joke about it, there's also some truth to it, right? If you can just, it's like shampoo. You just need a little bit. It lathers you up and then you're fine. Oh God, are you talking about how it was completely trashed yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> wearing the dog right now. <laughs> also, when he came back, he said that, you know, after a pissing, he was like, wow, that water is cold <laughs> right? and, and deep. <laughs> River wide, mountain high. <laughs> Ain't no mounting <laughs> hard enough. <laughs> I feel bad because... Probably y'all don't know the reference. Y'all need to come down to Atlanta so we can teach y'all more 
about mm-hmm. all of these touch, t- you know, tones that you need to uh, touch stones. Stones. Or yeah. the touch stones because uh, – Yeah, that's the name of our the <laughs> our <jukebox>. record label. <laughs> <laughs> tunes. <Yeah. laughs> Touch tunes. How close are you guys with bars in your areas? Do you guys associate with them much? Yeah, oddly, um, the the bar owners on this strip uh, on Edgewood Avenue are they're all very close. You know, we have a uh, a Facebook group and messaging that we go through and use to communicate with each other and sort of um, yeah, we keep each other up to date on what's happening, what's not happening, uh, events that are going on, just things throughout the city. Yeah. So it's a pretty tight new tight knit community. We love being on Edgewood Avenue. It's very especially because it's at the moment kind of known for its nightlife, and uh, there are definitely some streetwide events that we've been a part of. Uh, when we first start, uh, opened up in 2012, we were likening it to a college dorm. That first kind of year you move in, and everyone introduces themselves and. Everyone just kind of wants to get drunk and hang out. Uh, it was very much like that. There was no feeling of competition. We have never had an animosity towards another bar, and we've never felt animosity from another bar. So it's it's nice yeah. being here. Yeah, we definitely circle the wagons when we have to. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a community, and we're, uh, we're happy to be a part of that community. Do you have any ghost stories with Joystick Bar? Have you seen any ghosts in the area? So we've never seen a ghost in Joystick, but we have mm-hmm. our sister bar, the other bar we own across the street, which is Georgia Beer Garden, is absolutely haunted by the previous owner, Beverly Pleasant. She makes herself known every so now and then. People on staff there have mentioned things. Uh, they might smell the smoke of a misty slim 3000 or whatever it was that she used to smoke. Uh, and she's a very nice ghost, you know, you piss her off. And so far they've been good at that, that, but you can definitely get that vibe if you're there all by yourself at night. Yeah. Alone. You feel, I'm not saying you hear the words. Oh, hell no. But you like feel them. You're about to do something and there's this sensation that comes over you and you're like, oh, hell no. Where did that come from? Right. That was Beverly. Right. And if you can't find like a, um, you know, a lighter for your cigarette and you just step outside, if you close your eyes and say her name three times. Mm-hmm. It'll be lit automatically. Yeah. <laughs> Did that actually happen? Oh yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's it. That is. Just, that is. That, there is nothing more real and true about Beer Garden than that one thing. That's convenient. <laughs> it is well, <laughs> especially as people who are too cheap to buy a dollar lighter. Mm. Uh, you're right. That is very convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Ectoplasm flames are hard to, to really get to light your, your cigarette. Yeah, but and you can never while. capture it on camera is the thing. Yeah. <laughs> She's very shy. So what are your guys' favorite hobbies? The, uh, does the blowjob thing count? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, well, then I've answered my question. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't know that I have a lot of room for hobbies anymore. You know, I enjoy listening to new music. Uh, I enjoy eating out at different places, right, and trying new food. I think if I had a hobby, part of that is just conversation with people, right? I love talking to different people and finding out about them and their backgrounds. I also make meth in my basement. That's a little bit of a hobby, but it's mostly for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Heisenberg. Yeah. <laughs> what's uh what is one place you guys would like to go in the near future you know what uh, i have always i was real lucky that i grew up in an airline family i've been able to travel a lot but if there's one place i've wanted to go that i've never been it's japan i'd love to go there and just spend like two or three weeks you know getting lost in translation quite literally and just uh hmm. I don't know, experiencing such a completely different culture from the one that i grew up in nice about you other guys? Anything to add on to that? Thailand, for sure. I have for much of the same answer. Um, in addition to the culture, I think seeing the landscape would be, you know, very profound. Mm. Uh, I have, uh, although I've been to London when I was in high school, one, I have very few memories of it. But, uh, two, I really want to go to an English little countryside village. One, just to look for real estate, uh, to find that perfect little co- cottage to retire in, me and my husband. Um, but also because that's clearly where a lot of murders happen based on all the TV I watch. And it also <laughs> seems like you can kind of get away with it if you're just smarter than the neighborhood gossip. 
<laughs> so that's kind of going along with the thrill seeking, oh, right? Yes, I suppose murder. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, but one of Brandon's thrills is absolutely seeing how close he can get to death. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Love it. And then uh, going off that one, what is one place you've been in the past and would recommend to other people? Uh, Oh, honestly, for me, that's Madrid. That's my favorite place in the world that I've ever been. I've only been twice, but Madrid is just a fantastic city that has this amazing uh, marriage of new and old and uh, cultures. It's it really is fantastic. Plus, there is a tapas joint every three feet. And if you've never experienced the joy of just wandering down a street and getting a drink, eating some mussels, eating some pan catalan, just some tomato rubbed bread, like you, it is, it is my ideal culture that is centered around food. It's centered around good times. Uh, it is centered around no bedtime. Uh, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, I would say... I'm not gonna. Well, I can't say Madrid because he just said Madrid. Uh, That's why I spoke um, first. <laughs> um, I, 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 Spain, you know, I, um, I, you know, I really enjoy Amsterdam. I think you got the touristy parts of Amsterdam where it seems congested and hard to walk around. But I think when you get into the heart of it, it's really fascinating to me to find so many people who just live so well with each other. Right? The food is not that great. The beers are good. Like you have pockets of small towns in a really big city. I would say. Baja, California, Mexico. Ooh. Yeah. Never whether, cool. whether you go from like, um, I mean, Tijuana is mm-hmm. insane. Drive as fast as you can through that place and don't stay. But once you get to Ensenada, <laughs> uh, it's really lovely. The tacos are amazing. And then you get to like pass through these amazing desert landscapes. And it's kind of like this free for all. It's like, desert frontier where you just like if it pleases you could you could drive 100 miles per hour through the desert for miles on end and then there's just beautiful beaches uh huge coves great places to go snorkeling and then you get all the way to the bottom which is like cabo san lucas and then that's like a touristy area and if you want to do like the club world and all that it's great and if you're a youngin you can drink at 18 oh yeah <laughs> We're all grown up, so you know, twenty one. So <laughs> not an issue. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, you've seen <laughs> I wanna go to Baja, California. Right, yeah, yeah. That, that was a really good Ooh. endorsement for Baja. You know what I'd also recommend, uh, and I've not been there in like thirty years, and I'd love to go back is uh Tbilisi, uh, which is the capital of the Republic of Georgia, because they it's just so different from the rest of the world, right? Their process as far as how they deal with guests, um, what they drink, how they drink, the food that they eat, you know, they're right there at that intersection of Europe and Asia and the Middle East. And so it's, uh, I don't know, they have a lot of really interesting things going on. Huh. Cool. Nice, nice. Somewhere I've not been in 30 years uh, is uh, suburban Atlanta, which I wouldn't recommend you too, uh, because you've probably already been. If you've eaten at an Olive Garden, then you've been to suburban Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I've not ate at an Olive Garden in a while, but it makes not, sense. not a fan of the endless breadsticks, huh? <laughs> They're endless. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I'm not big into the hype of Olive Garden. Like the endless pasta is all right, but I mean, I I don't really see the complete hype. You know, that's just my opinion, though. Is there hype around Olive Garden? Yeah, <laughs> some some would say. Yeah, some would say. <laughs> Same with Red Lobster. Those are two places. Like I, I don't like Red Lobster. I like like good seafood. But I mean, that's just well, opinion well, based. No, you, you know? like good seafood, which is why you don't go to Red Lobster. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you agree because some people get mad at me for saying it. I'm like, I it's gross, but no, you know, that's right. no, <laughs> Darden Restaurant Group can come after us for all all they right, <laughs> right. I am not for Olive Garden. I am not for Red Lobster. Yeah. I know. Anytime it's cooked in a different state and shipped in a plastic bag. So to give you an idea of my opinion, quality of Red Lobster, when I was a, let's see, I moved to Georgia when I was 12. So I was under 12 years old. So I was still living in New York. And uh, we had been to a Red Lobster, which for me was very fancy. I grew up in a small town. We didn't grow up with a lot of money. So we went somewhere where there was a Red Lobster. Uh, and I came home as a, let's say, 10 to 11 year old. And then I recreated their Cheddar Bay biscuits just by like figuring out how to bake a biscuit. Like it was <laughs> <laughs> this really dumbass kid can recreate your greatest thing. Then no. 
<laughs> Which is completely different from like a Texas Roadhouse like cinnamon roll because those slap. I mean, in my opinion, though, I, lo- I love Texas Roadhouse. Red Lobster, though, yeah. you know. <laughs> I will say, actually, Texas Roadhouse uh, does treat their employees a little bit better. So, you know, yeah. if you're going to choose a chain. Yeah, go for a good a chain that doesn't treat their employees like shit. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad we're all in agreement. This is this is like a first, you'd be surprised. So many people love it, but you know, I'm I'm glad we're on agreement on on this. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so how would y'all define the, I guess the Ohio culture, which seems very generic, but I know are both of y'all based in Toledo, but you, Joe, you're just with your family in Cleveland right now. Cleveland was it? My dad sides from Michigan, like Ann Arbor ish okay. area, and then my um, mom sides from Cleveland. They met through some mutual friends and stuff. So, um, I I guess it's kind of hard to describe the culture here. I feel like we're kind of like I don't want to say basic, but like what you would expect from like an average college town or like an average, you know, like city. It's kind of like <laughs> what goes on, yeah. you know. Like, what you so. expect from an average college, college town is different from what I expect, yeah. which is a lot of repressed homosexuality. Yeah, that was definitely his experience in a <laughs> uh, traditional college town. <laughs> I will say in fairness yeah. to the college town that he is referring to, which is Athens, Georgia. Mm. Uh, Athens is a great little it it's really a unique is. thing. It, it, yeah. Its music scene is uh, – world famous at right. this point. I really love those small cities. Yeah. My one of my favorite bar type of bars to go to. No, I will say the favorite type of bar I like to go to. It's a small town gay bar. Yeah. Because and it's a lot of the things we were talking about Atlanta earlier, a lot of the reasons that Atlanta is so cool is that it's that one place in this really tiny area that all of the weirdos and the cool kids and just those artists and those creative souls and those people who just don't feel like they belong in an olive garden. Lock- <laughs> yeah, so those kind of power cities, they always have those real good gems. Yeah, you're going to find a lot more interesting uh, people in a gay bar, let's say in Greenville, South Carolina, mm-hmm. uh, than maybe even in Atlanta, right? Because, because the thing about those gay bars is that you literally get – Every kind of gay, yeah. right? You it's, go, not, it's not uh, divided by the twinks and the bears and the whatever. Right. And the cum guzzlers. Yeah. Which are mostly twinks. Uh, there <laughs> are. <laughs> and a bear. And a bear. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize there were so many like genres. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let us start. We can't educate you on yeah. the full breadth yeah. of gay right. Uh, genre. Right. Especially if you're not here. But when you come to Atlanta, we'll yeah. make sure we take you on a tour. We call it our gay safari. <laughs> yes. And because because Atlanta is so great, it does have so many different bars that are so unique to each individual subculture. So you can go on safari and say, wow, you know, as I'm saying it out loud, I'm realizing <laughs> that's kind of a terrible way of putting it. Like, they're <laughs> say this. They're not as they're not zoo creatures. They are human beings <laughs> who deserve respect. And they deserve uh, all of the the love and uh, yeah. you know uh, honest human interaction in the world. Uh, that being said, if you are not familiar with the subcultures, uh, we basically have this lineup where you can see all of the different types in their natural element in the places where they feel safe and we love them and that being said if we take you to them and you make anyone feel unsafe in their home environment we will murder you (laughs) right because fuck you right (laughs) jerry lynn jerry i feel like you know if we were to take you to a place uh like bulldogs which is an all black uh gay bar here in atlanta i think as the only two little white boys in there i think you would enjoy the attention (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, why do you think why do you think we're two little white boys well, yeah <laughs> uh, this, all right fair point just don't wear anything too complicated exactly <laughs> <laughs> I'm not to stereotype but i always appreciate when uh when frat bros uh get to appreciate what sorority girls go through yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I've never really thought about it that way. So you don't know the Me Too movement until you've been Me Too. Exactly. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> Dan, come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Dan uh, got hired. It's really strange, but it's yeah. Weird. He Me Too'd us and sued us, and we're like, shit, have uh, a job. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it was easier to make him general manager than to pay that out. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, you're like a hundred grand one time or fifty grand a year, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We'd appreciate not throwing out numbers like that because yeah. he doesn't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is now shut. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Being from Atlanta, do you guys watch any sports or anything? You know, in the sports realm, there. United, yeah, right. Woo! Ah. Also, Georgia State Panthers, right? <laughs> and it's hard not to love the pain and difficulty and ruin and, and depression and sadness that the Falcons put you through every single season. Listen, you're not in an abusive relationship with the Atlanta Falcons. You're not in Atlanta, right? <laughs> exactly. I, I didn't want to have to do this with uh, to you guys. But uh, go go Patriots! Oh, because <laughs> oh. no, not only am I am an Atlantan, but I also I'm I'm from New York, and so I have a lot of New York family, and so anyone oh. that is hardcore Patriots, I just um, don't respect. Is what I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, just me being from Michigan, Tom Brady. Like I just started liking them because Tom Brady was from Michigan. Or he went to U of M, you know. So that's how I kind of got into being a Patriots fan. So I thought I had to, you know, throw that in there real quick. Hey, you know what? Hitler was from Austria. No one's like, you know, jumping up and down about that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not to uh, blend all the northern Midwestern states together, uh, but I know nothing about sports, me being an incredibly gay man. <laughs> I will say the thing I love most about the Packers uh, is – their name. I uh, no. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> All joking aside, I like that they are actually uh, owned by the city. Yes. That they yeah. are – when you talk about city pride and you talk about sports pride, because yeah. sports do bring a lot of pride to the city. Yes. And that's great. Um, and the Packers have been able to maintain that uh, city ownership, and it makes it way more legitimate. So although, yeah. yes, I I do love Atlanta United. I I enjoy soccer because they're hot. I enjoy soccer because I live five minutes from Mercedes-Benz Stadium, which I hate saying out loud. I don't – like Arthur Frank doesn't need my adulation. He doesn't need my money. He doesn't right. need any of that. Right. But for uh, for the city of Green Bay to be able to say that this stadium is owned by the city yeah. uh, and so when you – when you cheer for the Packers, you're cheering for Green Bay. Yeah. I respect the fuck out of that. Right. They're the most socialist of all the NFL teams. Yeah. When it comes to that. And as socialists, we really appreciate that. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because, you know, it, since I've known Brandon, Brandon's not necessarily been very specific about the teams that he supports, but he seems to always enjoy the actual process of when sports are happening. He, oh, it, I love a crowd. Yeah. And he likes it when he sees people – you know, supporting one thing over another. And yeah. sports are a lot like video games where, you know, that doesn't, you don't age out of the team that you like, right? Like you still mm -hmm. like it. And so Brandon's been an athletic supporter for a long time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, it, <laughs> all uh, my blowjob jokes aside. <laughs> and they are all on the side, by the way, because this is <laughs> yeah. no, he, he will not appreciate. Uh, I, we'll cut that part out for anybody, any of the other ones who may be listening. You know. uh, I love people loving things. It's why I love Dragon Con. Yeah, it's my favorite thing about Joystick. Uh, yeah. it is. I appreciate when people have an unadulterated love for something that isn't selfish. Right. You know, when you can look outside yourself and just really love something, no matter what anyone else says, like Mets fans, like it's hard to be a Mets fan. I imagine, right. especially in a city that has the Yankees. Right. So if you like legit love the Mets and have been with the Mets the entire time, I think you're an idiot, but I think that, yeah. but I appreciate you. <laughs> right. Right. No, you, you have to go through and, uh, uh, that is the one nice part about tribalism, right? Is that, uh, when you get tribal about something like that, whether it's a sports team or star Wars versus star Trek, uh, it's, I don't know, it's a little fun to take a side and go through and, uh, and enjoy yeah. that. I, you know, I don't know. I think sports is a, a good way of doing that. And of course, uh, you know, when it comes to our soccer team, our MLS team, which is Atlanta United, 
they've been kicking ass. You know, they've oh, only been yeah. around for three years. Yeah. They've gone to the championship every, th- you know, the finals all three years. And we don't get a lot of good sports teams in Atlanta. Yeah. So no offense. To- no, we love the Hawks. Yeah. We love them. Right? Yeah. One day, <laughs> it's only like another 20 years, they'll be great. <laughs> no offense to Matt Ryan if he's listening, exactly. right? Exactly. He is, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. He's probably run out of whatever batteries he needs in his, you know, um, uh, hearing aids by now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I understand that my, uh, you know, most of my mom's side of my family's from Cleveland and they haven't won much. So I, I respect them. Hey, you, you know, know. What? not true. Y'all have won a reputation. <laughs> 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 what a, I mean, they did win the NBA finals, but they completely blew, you know, uh, uh, MLB finals and football team and everything. So overall, you know. They, they're all right. Can they're I ask right. you a somewhat <laughs> almost offensive question about Cleveland? Because I'm older, and you know, growing up, I always heard Cleveland referred to by one particular phrase that I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, <laughs> you know, the mistake by the lake. Um, is, it, is it? Do you feel like it's progressed since then? Is it different? Yeah, dude. I think so. Um, yeah. Um, I think I think it has progressed. I mean, I've been I've been to a lot of. Um, downtowns you know uh like florida texas new orleans you know cleveland detroit and i think cleveland has a pretty good vibe to it i mean everybody's super nice super cool um there's no judgment or anything i don't know i think cleveland honestly is like a fun city overall regardless of how bad their sports teams and other stuff like that is i think it's a pretty fun and you know a good city overall at least since I've been here. <laughs> My understanding is that, yeah. uh, that there's been an incredible revitalization of the downtown area in Cleveland, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Can we all take a part if we go to Cleveland yeah. to show us the good spots? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, my sister actually works at one of the biggest clubs there. It's called Forward and uh, Magnolia. And, I mean, if you guys ever come, just shoot us an email or a text and we'll get you in and it'll Can be a good time. we do a podcast <laughs> from there with you? Yeah. Absolutely. Shoot, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they would not Can mind that. Drag? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can you, what? Can you say. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I I don't know if they've had any shows like that, but I honestly doubt they would care. Like I said, Cleveland's pretty. Like they're pretty open. Yeah. So. Some of my favorite bottoms have been from Ohio, so I totally get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You just almost made me spit out my drink on my computer <laughs> in, a, in a funny way. In a funny way. And you're thinking, oh yeah, yeah, they're totally bottom. Yeah, aren't right, they? right. <laughs> yeah. Dan, do you have any uh, any more fun, funny, entertaining questions? Oh man, I I think we pretty much covered it. <laughs> <laughs> man, I have a question for you, Dan. Who edits this? Yeah. Who has the oh boy? <laughs> Uh, Dan is our audio production manager. To, actually, that would be me. <laughs> How long is the final podcast? Right. Uh, for this one, it'll probably take about mm, 15 ish, 20 minutes out. There's no way you're only taking 15 minutes off this podcast. You not listen to us for an, a fucking two hours. <laughs> I, Dan's just trying to be nice. We're probably gonna have to cut about half this. <laughs> <Right. so. laughs> that makes more sense. Thank you, thank you. Although we appreciate your uh, uh, you being nice, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Very sweet. You're a sweet individual. I try. I try. Already. Well, um, awesome. If that's all we got, um, do you have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to say before we close this up? Uh, yeah. Can uh, y'all describe to me? How many sweet beverages you each had today? Oh boy. Um. Well. One, two, uh, three. Don't be shy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I'm trying to think. It's, I'll, I'll I'm at start. this point. While, it's you, hard. While, while you think, I'm going to start. So I had two beverages of ice cream <laughs> slash chocolate milk slash vodka, and that was about seven shots of that. And then I had a Mike's Hard and a seltzer. Okay, so I want to interject before you continue just to say, if you are ever down in Atlanta, based on the things you're talking about, you will absolutely love 
art coffee <laughs> slushy. It is amazing. It's boozy. It is creamy. It mm-hmm. is coffee-y. It is all yeah. real things. There's no flavoring involved. Um, and, uh, and I think you would love it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm at like probably like eight. I finished like three quarters of a fifth of Bacardi. <laughs> um, so. Wait, three quarters of a fifth. Hold on, I have to do math. <laughs> I would be eight. I can't do math. Yeah, I was a so I definitely can't. I, where's our accountant? Yeah. <laughs> How much is that, Dan? What is a fifth? Is that a seven fifty? No, a fifth is a liter and a half. I think. No, that's seven. That's a seven. That's a seven fifty. Seven fifty. Seven fifty. Um, okay, so have you three quarters of one of those? Yeah, since like about one twenty something. So in the past like so five like, hours, that's like eighteen, nineteen ounces of booze. Yeah, I mean yeah. that is a okay. respectable yeah. amount of booze. Absolutely. We congratulate you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might take a nap after this. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Because you're almost twenty two, you probably won't even have a hangover. Yeah. I don't know. Are you the one that's almost twenty two? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Um, yeah, I, it's 50, 50. I never really know. Usually I get more of a stomach hangover than a head hangover, to be honest. What's uh, a stomach hangover? Yeah. How's that different? Um, my stomach just feels like I'm about to puke all day and my head feels so, fine. Wh- so you've experienced much. both. Uh, what do you find creates a stomach hangover versus a head hangover? The, they're both pretty much caused, I feel like, by mixing alcohol. So I've stuck to just Bacardi today. But I've also had a lot of sugar with the, you know, pina colada and the strawberry daiquiri mix. So that's probably going to kill my head pretty bad, I would assume. I feel like the sugar definitely gets to your head and the mixing the drinks definitely gets to your stomach. So from my experience. (laughs) You know, if you just drink that rum straight. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to buy this. Okay. So y'all's goal before you get to Atlanta. This is your homework. Is to phase out the sugar. So by the time you get to us, we need you just drinking booze out of a bottle. We'll grant you some ice. I yeah. think that's legit. Sure. A little toke, <laughs> some weed here and there too, you know, yeah. to even it out. But, uh, I think I would have made it about 20 minutes through this podcast if I was drinking straight. <laughs> <laughs> I made it through one yeah. hour, 47 yeah. minutes and three seconds. Yeah, I made it through my entire life pretending to be drinking straight. <laughs> <laughs> the only drink I can drink straight is a like a bullet bourbon. That's the only thing I can really drink straight. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, we think y'all should come down. We will show y'all a good time. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And whatever I was going to say that was inappropriate, <laughs> but I'm deciding not to say now because I realize it's <laughs> inappropriate. But you would enjoy it, and because I still have to cut out like fucking half of this, so I know, you right? Need to be able to. Yeah, right. I need some of it. That is appropriate for a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> like you said, we're we're cutting out well at, at least half of it, so don't don't worry about it too much. <laughs> well, you can you can follow us on our socials and everything like that. Um, you can follow us on the after hour social socials eh, socials personal everything like that, and uh, we'll keep in contact and everything yeah. like that. Uh, get, so. get your tickets yeah. to Dragon Con. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Besides Dragon Con, do you guys have any socials you'd like to shout out? Yeah. Yeah. Follow us at, uh, so follow our Facebook on, on Joystick and our, um, and our Instagram because I think we're, we are actually on, on Instagram. We are better at Facebook. We are on Instagram. Yeah. Um, Joystick Game Bar is our handle on all of that. Um, and also find us on Grinder. Yeah. Yeah. Grinder. <laughs> and occasionally on Scruff, depending on how hairy we are that day. Yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about like the bar or are you guys personally? Um, oh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no, we, the bar. We yeah. know you meant the bar. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bar, Georgia Beer Garden. Yeah. Uh, it, by the time you hear this, it <laughs> might have gone through an amazing transformation. We're thinking about turning it into an underwater mermaid bar. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. How, how long okay. can y'all hold your breath and also drink liquor? Yeah. Wait, wait, you got to explain that to me. Like, hold my breath and drink. Am I, like, holding it and then, like, a funnel's, like, in my mouth like with alcohol? Or Yeah, you're underwater and drinking liquor. So whatever is easiest for you. I I don't know (laughs) what more explanation we could give you. Uh, Shoot. I mean, depending on the percentage, like, I'd like to think of maybe, like, 10 to 15 seconds. I'd say 10 seconds. All right. We're going to test that now. Right. Right here for the first you heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan, can you cut that part out? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is proof. 
I, I'm not ashamed of how drunk I am. Are you? Right? <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all. Yeah, we really appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for what you're doing. And quite frankly, we really were shocked that you met us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks for being on the show, guys. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. Y'all have a good one.